Selkirk, 4,000. Herald, City Department. Who? O'Brien, eh? Okay. Yeah, I'll get a statement. Thanks, Charlie. Bye. Give me police headquarters. Police headquarters. Press room. Just a moment, please. Hello. Yeah. Me? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Good. Sure, I'll phone my story in as soon as I see O'Brien. Bye. Boys, there's a break for you. Guffey just told me that Bill O'Brien got a lieutenancy for making that Patello pinch. Yeah, what did I tell you guys? I said when it happened, O'Brien was the only cop around here that had guts enough to pinch Patello for murder. Well, it may have taken guts to pinch him, but it'll take facts. To convict. Listen, if O'Brien pinched him, he's going to convict him. A wagon? Nah, it's the central office car. Say, it's O'Brien. Is he coming inside? Yeah. Good, I'll get him. What for? You don't think he's going to talk, do you? Sure he will. Not till after the trial, he won't. Oh, you think so? Wait. Oh, Bill, come on in a minute. Hello. Oh. Oh. Hiya, William. Uh, Lieutenant, I mean. Put it there, Bill. I knew you had a chin. Bill that. Boy, we're proud of you. Thanks, boys. Well, Bill, let's have the story. Well, there isn't any story now. And after the trial, you won't have to ask me for one. Oh, no, Bill, I mean about your promotion. Did the commissioner kiss you on both cheeks when he slipped you the badge? Hello? Yeah. He made me a lieutenant in a homicide detail. That's all. There isn't anything to say. Bill, it's for you. For me? Oh. O'Brien speaking. Johnny just told me. He's as happy about it as I am. Oh, Bill, it's wonderful for you, dear. For me? For us? I want to tell you just how much it really means to me. But that'll take the rest of my life. And Captain Andrew wants to see you this minute. Tell him I'll be right down. I sure do. Me too. Awful sure. Goodbye, dear. Where did you hear about Bill? Yeah. Well, in the district attorney's office. I was in there for an hour, sis. In the district attorney's office? Sure. I'm going to be the state's big witness against Mike Patello. Oh, Johnny. Well, I got to be, sis. I'm the only one that saw Mike plug Hanley. Oh, Johnny, you can't. You mustn't. If Patello's convicted on your testimony, they'll be. Try to bump me for the squawk? Mike's mob? Oh, they'll do yes. something. Now, Ruth, you're my own sister and all that. And I'll take your advice on most anything. But this time, I got to listen to the district attorney and Bill O'Brien. Did Bill tell you to talk? No. But he will. Bill or not, it's something I got to do. You don't understand, Ruth. I just got to do it. Now, quit worrying. You and Bill got more important things to think about. He doesn't answer. Molly, he answers. Yes. Lieutenant O'Brien is on his way to your office now, Captain. Right. Hello. Lieutenant. Good morning, Captain. O'Brien, how long has it been since you heard from your father. 
Just how much do you know, Captain? How long since you've seen him? I've seen him once in 15 years, about a year ago. Does he know that you're a police officer? No, he hates cops. And he thinks they hate him. He'd have hated me. I kind of had to get acquainted with him. I told him something. I don't know what. You know, I knew your father when I was pounding the beat. He's a two-time loser. Now that you've got him paroled... He doesn't know I did it. When a man has been thinking of nothing but freedom for ten years and gets it, it's good to let him think he got it himself good behavior. That's what they're telling him. Commissioner made you a lieutenant because he thinks nothing can stop you. You put Patello in a cell. You're sitting on top of the world right now, but if the old man breaks his parole, he'll break you. Think that over. I've had plenty of time to think it over, Captain. You read the letter. That is my dad. And he's coming home. Bill, I'd... I'd love to be there when you tell old John P. he's got a copper for a son. And I'd love to have you. Limo. Why? If it ain't old John P. O'Brien. Limo, sit down. I didn't know you. I swear I didn't. It's been so long. Where did you come from? Been in the smoker. But I thought you were oh, down. Oh, I know. You you thought I was still eating on the taxpayers, didn't you now? Yeah, I did for a fact. <laughs> well, I got myself out. Ow. Good behavior. Oh, you don't really believe that now, do you? Oh, you see, I was running that joint. And one day, along comes a parole. For what? Good behavior. <laughs> oh, they was glad to see the last of me. And what's more, it's the last of me they ever will see. Don't blame you a bit, John. You ain't as young as you used to be. Oh. I'd quit myself if I were you. Who said anything about quitting? Did I? I did not. Mm -mm. Let's go someplace where we can talk confidential like. Let's go. Let's hurry. with that? Oh, it's grand. Where'd you get it, Limo? 
Did you uh, ever hear of Mike Patello? Here we are, John. Well, John, here we are. Easy, John, easy. There's a dick out there spotting the train, a cop by the name of O'Brien. Mm, O'Brien? The toughest bloke on the force. He'd pinch his own father. Mm, when an O'Brien's wrong, he's wrong. Oh, lummy, he's glued there. The other end, John. Oh, what's it? to see you again. But you know, it's apologizing to I am for going against the lock. She's I to myself, the door's locked. It ain't locked, says I. <laughs> and in two seconds, <laughs> that's right there. You know, it's 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 the hairpin, does it? It's an old neck. It comes in handy. I'll show it to you. Sure, but come on over here, Dad. What? Come on. Ooh, Hot Not feel. feeling very well, are you? Oh, I'm feeling great. Put it right down there. Oh. There you are. Oh, Billy, I nearly forgot. Look, here's a little present for you. I made it with my own lily white hand. Oh, that's nice, Dad. Thanks. Isn't, isn't it nice? I, uh... Oh, Billy, bad stuff. That's bad stuff. I never used him in 20 years. You know, kid, you'll get yourself pinched one of them days. <laughs> you will? You hey, will? Dad, how about some nice hot coffee? It's all right. Good old coffee. I'll make you some right away. Good old coffee. Boop. Oh, it's all. Billy. Huh? Where are you? Billy! Oh, you don't. What's that harness doing in there? What have you to do with such a thing as that? Come here, Dad, and I'll tell you. Will you take your hands off me? What is all this nonsense? That's my uniform. Your uniform? My uniform. When you're... Oh, oh. Let me out of here. Oh. Out of my way. I'll stay under the same roof with no flat-footed bull. Get out of my way. Where are you going? Out of that door. No, you're not. I didn't want to tell you this till morning, Dad. 
But I've been on the force eight years. That's how I found where you were. Now, I know you hate cops, but that's all over now. You're going to come here and live with me and start over again. Get out of my way. You're an old son of mine. Stand away from the front there and let me go. Go on. Go on. Oh. Oh. I suppose you'll be staying out for half the night again, eh? Oh, hardly that bad. I'm just going down to the gym for a workout. With them cops again, eh? It's bad company you're keeping, Bill. They won't do you any good. Now, oh, listen, Dad. Those boys are all... Oh, it's cold. I thought the gas acted funny when I was cooking the dinner. But say, didn't I mind you to pay the gas bill last week? And you haven't done it. It ain't honest, Bill. It ain't honest. Ain't it enough that I work my fingers to the bone trying to run this place? Must I think of everything, huh? I'll attend to it tomorrow. Forget the dishes, Dad. The housekeeper will clean them up in the morning. Eh, uh, and break another plate. Have I broken one single dish? I have not. And what credit do I get? I'll go, Dad. Let Why, me come Ruth. in, dear. Well, what's the matter, dear? Please. Ruth, darling. Oh, Ruth. My, if, if you don't look a picture. Good evening, Dad. Ooh. Darling, it's, it's the pleasure of your company I'll have to be depriving myself of. I've got to go out on business, see? Good night, darling. Good night, Bill. Good night, Dad. Good night, Dad. Tell me, dear, what's the matter? Oh, Bill, try to understand me. Please try. You're the only one that can help me. It's about Johnny. Johnny? Yes, I've made up my mind to ask you to do something. Promise me you will. Well, what is it? Promise me. Honey, you know you don't have to make me promise to do anything for you. This is Bill, the guy that loves you. If Patello is convicted, they'll, they'll... Oh, don't let Johnny talk. You can't let him get up there and talk Patello into the chair. But, honey... You don't seem to realize how Johnny feels. He's a cop, and a good one. That's why he's going to testify against Patella. Oh, I understand all of that. But there's something that you seem to have forgotten. Johnny's just a kid. It isn't fair, Bill. But Ruth... You want a conviction, don't you, Bill? Has your ambition nothing to do with it? If I've been ambitious, you know the reason. I've tried to be something for your sake. Something besides a flat foot pounding a beat. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. I could be happy with you if you were still pounding a beat. It's just that I'm so afraid. Oh, don't let Johnny talk. You only have to say the words. He believes in you so. That's just why I can't ask him to be a quitter. Not even for his own sake. Not even for your sake or mine. Bill, I asked you to do something for me. Something that meant everything. Now there's really nothing more to be said. But Ruth... Please. Why... I didn't want it to be a test, but it was. Ruth, listen to me, oh, will you? Oh, I 
so, so much rather you said nothing. And don't, don't, don't say that you love me. Wait, I'll go with you. I ask you not to. I have a headquarters car. I'm quite safe. Very well. Good night, dear. Goodbye, Bill. Uh-huh. If it's in the window, it's phony. The real ice is in the box. Uh-huh. Maybe. Come on, Lionel. I got a date, John. With who? Tony Zurich, you know, he's the big shot with Mike Patello. Yeah? Yeah, you know, Tony and me are just, uh... Well, ta-da, John. Ta-ta. can read, can't you? Yes, why? Listen, lead it up to that rooming house, see? Tell them you want to rent a room. Now get this, none of the rooms suit you till they show you room 19. 19, see? Rent it, and tear up or vine up that paper. Right on, Mr. Zurich, but... Uh... Suddenly, Jack? No. Pay two weeks rent on the room and uh, keep the rest. What is it, Mr. Zurich? Let me in on it. Listen, I'm getting you a nice little place where you can be happy in, see? Because I like you, see? I have it. You want me where you can lay your hands on me? Sure, that's it. How about a stogie, Mr. Zurich? No, they're too good for you. You wouldn't understand them. Patello's private brand. The kind. Scram. What is it, Tony? A job for Patello? Open your trap and it means your neck. That room is poison, see? I see. Got to plant it, Limo. It's getting hot. I've the spot, John. My room. Here, take the key. Are you sure it'll be safe? As if it was in a grave, John. Here, smoke a real one. This is Patello's private brain. Hmm. All right, thanks, Limo. Listen, I'll tell you how to get there. You take the Crosstown car and get off at Oak Street. Then you walk four blocks down past the county courthouse and you cross right over the street there. Then you see a little stone place over there. And right beside that, another place where you see a little cream comes out. And you find that another place where you see a little cream. Don't forget, John, number 19. 19.
checkmate. Want to play another? No, Bill. You might win. <laughs> well, I got to be on my way. Good night, Bill. Good night, Johnny. Say, uh, Johnny. Yeah. Close the door. <clears throat> Before you go, I want to tell you something. Yeah, shoot. The district attorney wants you to testify against Patella, doesn't he? Why, sure. Well, kid, he can't make you say you saw the killing if you don't want to. Well, he isn't going to have to make me say it. I'm going to talk and talk plenty. Listen, we're up against a mob that's dynamite. I want you to remember that you've got an out. Nix, Bill. I know you're looking at it that way on my account, but... Maybe I am. Sure you are. And, gee, Bill, I... You don't know how much I... Oh, say. We'll be working together long after that rat's where he belongs. That's right, kid, but just the same. Remember what I told you. Don't you go worrying about me. All right, boy. Good night, Bill. Good night, Johnny. Captain, you could have knocked me down with a toothpick when I found out that he was Bill O'Brien's father. Have you recovered this stuff? No, sir. O'Brien know anything yet? No, sir. When I found out who John P. was, I went easy. Things fitted together so good is why I brought him in. Now I've come to you to find out where I stand. Where are you at, John P.? Right outside, sir. Step in there, man. And close the door. Can you hear me now? Just as plain as if I was in the same room with you, sir. Good. I want you to bring John P. into that room from the outer entrance and don't let him say a word. You understand? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And remember, don't let him make a sound no matter what happens in here. Okay, Captain. Hello, Ruth. Send Bill up to my office, will you please? How do you feel about tomorrow, Bill? You, you all set? You mean the trial? Yeah. Yes, we're all set. District Attorney's gonna rest his case right after Johnny Dale comes off the stand. Ah, that's smart. The defense won't be able to do very much with a jury that just heard that boy tell the truth. Bill, you look worried about your father? No, Captain. Perhaps you should be. Why do you say that? I've been wondering about your father. I've been wondering if he's on the square with you. What do you think? I'm sure he is. How sure? Positive. Captain, I've come to know my dad lately. I know the stuff he's made of, what he's got in him. He's playing on the level with me, and I bet everything I have in the world on it. Don't worry about John P. Hope you're right. Bill, you got a hard day ahead of you tomorrow. Now get out of here. Okay, Captain. Bring him in, Butler. Sit down. No, take it standing up if you don't mind. You don't remember me, do you, O'Brien? I know you. I know all about you. You do? Yes. 
You've broken the parole your son got for you. You've double-crossed him, and the big house is looking at you. You say it was Billy got me paroled? You don't suppose you done it, do you? So it was Billy. You'd be up there yet if it weren't for him. What have you done with that stuff from the jewelry store? Hope. I can get it. Good. I'm going to give you one chance to come clean. You don't deserve it, but your boy does. He tried to make a father out of you. Bring me that stuff here. I'll put you in the clear, but it'll be for the last time. I never tell Billy. Certainly not. Why do you think I'm giving you this break? Oh, bless you, Cap. I'll bring it to you in my own hands. Now let me tell you something. When an O'Brien's wrong, he's wrong. And it takes an O'Brien to put him right. Kid, there he is. Yeah. What of it? And therefore, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the state will endeavor to prove that Michael Patello did willfully and maliciously murder one John Hanley, a resident of this state and county. The state will demand that Michael Patello be required to pay the supreme penalty for his crime. Remember, kid, they can't make you talk. Let me use my own judgment, will you, Bill? I hope it's good. Now, Officer Dale, where did you first see the defendant? <clears throat> He was coming up the steps from the basement of the Club Regal. Were you acquainted with a person known to you as John Hanley? Yes, sir. He was a waiter, a good guy. Yeah, no doubt. Now, Officer Dale, when did you last see this waiter, John Hanley? 
when he was lying on the sidewalk in front of the Club Regal. Dead. Will you tell the court what caused the death of John Hanley? He was shot. How do you know? I saw it. You say you saw him shot? Yes, sir. Did you see the person who fired the shot that killed him? Yes, sir. Is the identity of this person known to you? Yes, sir. Is this person in this room? Yes, sir. Now, Officer Dale, will you tell the court the name of this person whom you saw fire the shot that killed John Hanley? Officer Dale, will you please answer my question? Yes, sir. The name of that person... Bad. He was a nice kid. Would you like to take a walk in the corridor, Mr. Patalo? No. When I go out of this cell, I'm going out for good. No, Mike. Not for good. Because I'm going to put you back in there for the murder of Johnny Dale. Yeah. And when are you going to make the pinch? When would you like it? Suppose you wait until you can make it stick. I'll wait just that long. You can't. There isn't that much time. The rest of my life, if it takes it. But the odds are 100 to 1 that I'm going to live the longest. I'll take the short end of that at any odds. Where is he? Here, here, We've got an order for your release, Mr. Patel. Open it. Court order. District attorney's move for dismissal. Hmm. What else could he do? Come on, come on, get it open. I'm a citizen of this bird. See? It ain't so safe around here. Too much shooting. I demand a police escort to my car. Oh. I'll take you down myself. Why, Mike, I wouldn't have anything happen to you for all the money in the world.
thing. That's all, Kono. You see that? Hmm. What about it? I found it planted in the room. The room. It means someone was there ahead of me. Must have been the guy that hired the room for you. Limo, not a chance. How do you know? Somebody squealed, I tell you. Say, what are you raving about, somebody squealed? This guy O'Brien is driving me off my nut. And he's out to get you. And that worries you. Not a bit. Why should it? If they hang anything on you, nothing's going to happen to me. Oh, no. Not a thing. No, for... Oh. So that's where they've been going, huh? Listen. Those cigars are made for Mr. Mike Patello. No one smokes them but Mr. Mike Patello. You know that. Put them back. Mr. Tony Zurich here? Hey, you. Where have you been? Just heard you wanted me, Mr. Zurich, and came up as quick as I could. Inside. This is the mug. What's your name? Uh, Limo. Uh, Charlie Lewis, Mr. Patello. Did you ever see this before? Why, I thought the old man had got it. What old man? Why, uh, O'Brien. He'll leave me have it, Tony. He'll croak Who's me. Who's old man O'Brien? Oh, Tony, you don't understand it. It's the cop's old man. He ran it over. What did you say? Oh, Mr. Bateller, I, I gotta have this stuff. What was that crack about O'Brien? Nothing, Mr. Bateller. I only... Uh... What about the cop's old man? Uh, the cop's old man made a plant governor. What cop? Uh, uh, Bill O'Brien's. Bill O'Brien's father. That stuff there? Oh, I don't know nothing about it, Mr. Patello. Except that Lieutenant William O'Brien's father is a crook. Uh, no, no, Mr. Patello, you don't get me. Mm. No. I don't get you. Oh, no. Tony, does this mean anything to you? Sure. I believe him. Oh. You do, hmm? The trouble with you, Tony, is you never learn to think. Now try hard and I'll teach you. Bill O'Brien is out to get us, right? I suppose I don't know it. His old man turns out to be a crook. Yeah. He can do 20 years for that. What would that do to O'Brien? Why is it busting? Hmm. You're showing signs. <laughs> when Bill O'Brien finds out I can rap his dad for 20, is he gonna lay off me or not? Holy smoke. He's due to find it out. 
Mr. Patello, can, can I... Uh... Whatever it is, no. You're going to do what I tell you to. What's the matter with you? What's this mean? Where did this come from? Came by messenger about ten minutes ago. And you opened it? I opened it. Mm. Well, I didn't think it was possible for anybody to be a cop and a gentleman at one and the same time. Hey, what have you been doing and what does this stuff mean? It's all part of something that's business of my own. Get out of my way. Where are you going? To attend to my business. Oh, no, you're not. You've gone just as far as you're going. When you come here, you said you were all through, and I believed you. Now you've... Oh, got... don't go telling me what I've been doing. I'll thank you to let me go my way. And that'll take you right back where I found you. Ah, so that's it. Right back to where you found me. I asked you no favors then, and I'm asking you none now. You're poking your nose into something that's my own affair. You're pleased to let me pass and pass peaceful like. You'll not be seeing me soon again. You're not going anywhere. You're going to do what I tell you from now on. You've broken every promise you ever made me. Now you're going to stay here and mend a man like it. You've lied to me, you... You're calling me a liar? Yes, I'm calling you a liar. Oh! Keep away from that door. Keep away from that door or I'll let you have it. You will now. You will call me a liar. Yeah, okay. Limo and the old man just left the spot. They ought to be here pretty quick. Give me that phone. Police headquarters. Police headquarters? Give me Lieutenant O'Brien. Just a moment, please. Here you are. O'Brien talking. Yes, this is Lieutenant O'Brien. Oh, uh, hello, Lieutenant. Hmm? Why don't you know? Mike Patello. Say, I was just wondering uh, how you'd like to drop up here for a little while. All right, nobody answered. Oh, a social call. Oh. Something to show me. Well, Mike, I... Just a minute, Mike. Made by Manuel Lopez. Especially for Mike Patello. That's all we need. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mike. I'll be right over. Just a minute, I'll give you... Wait a minute, Bill. I'm going to send the squad over with you. No, Captain. Michael have a dozen lookouts planted. I want to get in. I know it's too late, but I owe it to Johnny. I was the one. Now that... stop that, O'Brien. You done everything you could. You told the kid he didn't have to talk. You got nothing to blame yourself for. 
but I'm still going alone. I'll keep that private wire open. When you got him, use it. Right. Oh, Captain, don't let him go. Where is he? Go on to bring in Mike Patello. It's a trap. Patello knows Bill's got nerve enough to go and he's challenged him. Patello may have intended to be a trap, Ruth, but we're ready for that. Oh, why did you let him go? There he goes. Uh, he wouldn't have stopped for me. Nor for you. Something gets into those boys, they can't help it. They always go through. Come in, O'Brien. He'll be right in. How are you, O'Brien? My name is Patello. Patello. Mike Patello. Hmm. I'm glad to know you. I'm mighty glad to know you. Sit down. Like a drink? No, thanks. Mr. Patello, maybe I don't rightly understand, but what am I doing here? Well, your friend Limo Lewis told me about you. Mm hmm. What did he tell you? The work. And? And I thought you might want to do a little of that for me. No, no, you didn't. You had Limo bring that plant up here for some reason. To shake me down for a squeal on somebody, I'll bet. Are you admitting this heist was your plant? Sure, why not? Now, what is it you want with me? You'll find out soon enough. I'm not going to wait to find out, Patello. I don't like the look of you nor the sound of you. Mm. You wait, all right. <laughs> now, Mr. Patello, you...
Inside. Quick. Brian, come in. Hello, Mike. Sorry to keep you waiting. My servants are out. Yeah? Come inside. You want a drink? No, thanks. Nice of you to come up, O'Brien. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Mind if I smoke? Certainly not. Would you like one? Thanks. They're very nice. Where do you get them? They're made by Manuel Lopez. For a very special customer. Yeah. And what's that supposed to mean? There's a cigar like that, Mike, at headquarters. And it was found in the room from which Johnny Dale was shot. So it means that you're under arrest for the murder of Johnny Dale. Dead to rights, huh? Dead to rights. As long as we're going to take a ride together. How about it? What? Can I get my overcoat? Where is it? In that closet. Get it. Well, Copper, I guess you've got another pinch to make. Look behind that couch. You may as well.
When one crook kills another, they still call it murder. Even if one of them's your own father. What have you got to tell me? There's nothing I can say can do me no good now. How'd you get here? What happened? It's all my own making. Oh, I done it. I guess you don't want either of us, do you, Copper? <laughs> you can't take me without taking him. And if you take him, he'll burn. So this is the business you have, huh? I got myself into it. That's all you need know. That's all you ever will know. I'll take me own rap, see? You see that door? You're going out of it, alone. When you go through it, don't ever let me see you again. You now think... get out. You think you're giving me better than I deserve, don't you? Thanks, Billy, lad. You did right, Copper. <laughs> now all you've got to do is swear that you croaked Tony Zurich for the murder of Johnny Dale. Then we're all in the clear. What are you doing? I'm going to call police headquarters. You're still under arrest. I'm under arrest. Under arrest. Say, have you gone crazy? You're going to pinch me now after what you've done? That's it. Why, don't move. You're going to call the station? Why, you dumb, flat-footed bull, you can't pinch me. Ten minutes after I'm in the can, the district attorney, the papers, the world is going to learn that you turned a murderer loose. If you use that phone, you're through in the force, through in this town, through for life. You're a cop, you fool, and you've helped a murderer to escape. Police headquarters. You'll take a 20-year rap, and I can make it stick. Listen, I lose, and I know it. I'm through, and so are you. We'll go together. Why, you've gone insane. That call will cost you 20 Antrim's years. Antrim's wire. 20 years, do you hear? Hello, Captain. I've got... Patello. Well, you're good enough for me, O'Brien. You've got guts, but not enough. enough. I think I heard you say that you'd lost. Well, you were right. But you didn't know how right. Now, Flatfoot, I'm gonna tell you something. Tony Zurich croaked Johnny Dale. I paid him off. Now I'm going to pay you off. Did he get you, Dad?
dead. I couldn't leave you alone with that. That. Because, well, I didn't, Billy, lad. Rest easy, lad. They'll be here in a minute. and me had a long ways to go and get. Keep your eye on Billy. He'll go far, Captain. He's a great lad. My Billy is. Or a cop. I don't belong on this job any longer. Where are you going? What are you going to do? I don't know. It don't matter much. Wherever you go, I want to hear from you. All right. Bill, I can't let you go like this without... Oh, I know how wrong, how unfair I've been. But I couldn't let you go without first asking you to forgive me. Honey, I love you. What's that? The flying squad are going out. I'll be back in time for dinner. 